Florida's manatees are dying at an alarming rate, and if all things stay the same, the state could be seeing one of the deadliest years for the native sea cows on record. The problem? Well, that's what scientists are scrambling to figure out. Manatees are ubiquitous with Florida. Heck, there's an entire county named after them. Their pudgy faces can even be seen on landmarks across the state. They've been named our state marine mammal, and of course they are a marine mammal. They're long live, can live more than 60 years if they're allowed to do so. They're probably the most gentle animal I know of, and they're really not capable of aggression. So I think people can identify with that too, because they're defenseless, they're vegetarians, and they really are a beloved species. Sadly, it's just as common to see a statue of a manatee as it is to hear about one dying. My first real interaction was a really sad one, passing by another boat that was towing a dead manatee behind it. Everybody's faces on the boat looked very solemn, and I didn't know what was behind the boat until we passed them and, and saw why everybody was so upset. I mean, that was my first interaction with a Florida manatee. See, the relationship between manatees and the state they call home is a strenuous one. Florida's lush beds of grass make it the perfect environment for the sea cows to float around and thrive in. However, as soon as humans also started calling Florida home, the manatee population started to dwindle. There was a time when it wasn't uncommon to see manatee on the menu, and boats were hitting the mammals on a pretty regular basis. Manatee deaths were becoming so common that in 1973, when the U.S. created the Endangered Species Act, they were some of the first animals on the list. And they stayed on there for over 40 years. During that time, the programs and protections under the Endangered Species Act helped manatee populations rebound from hundreds to thousands. In 2017, manatees were removed from the endangered list and designated as a threatened species, which many scientists studying the mammals did not agree with. So now it's 2021, and at the time of recording this, there's over 500 reported Florida manatee deaths, three times the average of previous years. At this rate, over a thousand Florida manatees could be wiped out. Most of these deaths are being recorded on the Indian River Lagoon in Brevard County, a literal hub for manatees because of the seagrass that sits beneath the water. Seagrass is the biggest source of food for manatees. Without it, they can become malnourished and even starve. That's why it was so concerning when reports showed nearly 60% of seagrass in the Indian River Lagoon had died off over the last decade. Florida's own Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission said a reduction in food availability was a big factor for the deaths they recorded. Scientists are pointing the finger at algae blooms for the die-off. Seagrass, like any other plant, needs sunlight to survive. Algae blooms block that sunlight when they sit on the surface of the water. Those series of algal blooms that have occurred there really since 2011 have just year after year taken a toll on the, the amount of seagrass. You have nutrients coming in from the groundwater through leaching from septic tanks and drain fields and so forth. You have wastewater treatment facilities that are not up to standard. They have spills. You have runoff coming in from the uplands and with fertilizers and other impurities. So the, the amount of nitrogen, especially in phosphorus in particular, once it reaches a certain level, it begins to feed those algal blooms in such a way that it literally shades out the seagrass. Another issue is the shape of the Indian River doesn't allow a lot of water to easily get out and into the ocean. That leaves a lot of excess nutrients to just sit in the lagoon and continue feeding algae blooms. Luckily, there's a federal investigation into the rise in deaths. Experts are hoping it'll provide some concrete answers and solutions. If in fact the issue is that there was no seagrass in the Indian River Lagoon because there was too much nutrient pollution, then that's actually good news because we already have laws in place that address them. The bad news is that they're poorly enforced and they're poorly funded. I think at the end of the day, what would be a win here is whatever scientists determine to be the root cause, it just gets addressed. And chances are really good that we already have the tools we need in terms of the, the laws. Manatees have been one of Florida's most resilient mammals. This latest obstacle is just another chapter in the sea cow's turbulent history.